Well, I say, if you want to revamp your style, revamp your closet. Hi guys, welcome to my very first ever YouTube video. I'm so excited to be here and honestly, I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I've always come up with excuses on why I shouldn't do it. And you know what? COVID-19 has given me like some sort of new perspective on life because it reaffirms to me that really and truly life is short. So I decided to just let go of all my fears and go ahead and do the one thing that had been scaring me for a while. So welcome again. If you're here, I really do appreciate you being here. My name is Soti. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to my channel. My channel is going to be about all things style related. So I'm going to be teaching you how to shop your closet, how to style one item multiple ways. I'm also going to be showing a few DIYs on how to repurpose items and a few style hacks, tips and tricks. So make sure that if something that you like, you're here to observe. And also, I'm also going to be showing you some part of my lifestyle. So you will get story time. You will get life hacks as well. If all this sounds like content, that you would like do well to hit subscribe and like so we are kicking off my youtube channel with how to get your closet ready for the post lockdown slay okay if you're somebody that has like looked at people on social media and you've always wanted to change your style but you didn't know how to change your style or you feel like your wardrobe or your closet is very blah you know all black or all white or you feel like you wear the same thing all the time and you just want to switch your style well i say if you want to revamp your style revamp your closet the first thing you have to do to get there is to declutter your closet and that's what we're going to be tackling today when you declutter your closet what happens is that it helps you get rid of stuff you don't need and then you get to see stuff that you may need to get to that style that you want i personally recommend decluttering your closet at least twice a year i know i do that on a maximum scale at least twice a year going into the season so summer to winter winter to summer those two major seasons i also do declutter like on a minimum scale like maybe every week or sometimes i'm just going through my closet and i see something that i'm not really crazy about anymore and then i put it to the side i'm going to be giving you 15 tips on how to declutter and then a few more tips on how to organize today i'm not going to stress on the tips on how to organize i'm just going to list them out for you but i will go in depth on how to declutter i will probably make another video on how to organize properly because this is a whole nother ball game sis go grab a notepad and a pen you probably do need to take some notes you also have to bear in mind that we're going to be working with three piles right you have the yes pile you have the maybe pile and you have the no pile and i'm going to be giving you 15 tips they are basically questions that i ask myself um, when i want to clean out my closet but here's the thing they don't necessarily go in order and you may not need all 15 to get through your decluttering process okay so tip number one the six month rule now I know a lot of people say you should declutter every year if you haven't worn something in six months the likelihood that you would wear it in a year is very slim now I know somebody's gonna argue with me I'm like oh but what about you know if it's winter and we're in summer yes I know that there's some countries that have like six months of winter I think some parts of Canada have that if not the entire country but this applies to items that regardless you're not going to wear. You find out that all through summer you didn't wear that item. That was six months. Why do you still have it? Unless it's a very special piece, then I may keep it. Number two, do I love it? For me, something I would love is something I can style multiple ways. So if I can style it like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. I probably don't love it for you i don't know what your reasons for love is it could be you love the print it could be you love the fabric it's so soft it could be something that means a lot to you or maybe you got it from your grandma years before she passed as a family heirloom whatever is your reason for loving it if that reason makes sense then maybe you can go ahead and keep it tip number three does it fit your new image Maybe you got a new job, you know, you got a new promotion, you want to be taken seriously as a new boss. Meanwhile, your clothes make you look very frumpy. You might want to rethink, <laughs> you might want to think of like getting rid of all that stuff, right? And then filling your closet with stuff that matches the new you. Tip number four, does it fit your lifestyle? You got a new job, a nine to five job. You come from being working, from working at home to having a nine to five job. Meanwhile, all that's in your closet is sweatpants. 
your new lifestyle does not would not let you wear sweatpants to work right so you have to think of your new lifestyle and does it fit my lifestyle if it does not feel, fit your lifestyle then you might want to consider putting it to the left tip number five does it fit do you need to struggle and squeeze and push and shove to get into what you're wearing maybe you were a size 8 now you're a size 16. now if you love being a size 6 16 sis rock with that that's fine but if you feel like okay i don't want to be a size 16 for long maybe something happened in life changed maybe a sickness maybe you got pregnant i would say in that case maybe not get rid of everything per se but get them out of your closet and then you get to keep like a few things in your closet that as motivation and then the rest of the stuff you can move them out of your closet you can put them in maybe storage under the bed or actual storage right so if it doesn't fit me and i know that I, it may not fit me in like six months then i probably would get rid of it tip number six how does it make you feel i want to feel beautiful in whatever i wear i want to exude confidence if i feel like oh i just need to suck in my stomach a bit to make me feel good or maybe it's just not your style and then you're wearing it because maybe they got it for you you don't want to make them feel bad if it doesn't make you feel good i'll consider putting that in the no pile honestly tip number seven do i wear it is it one of those things that you find that you try it on all the time but you never get to wear it why do you have it which is actually my tip number eight why do you have it if you don't wear wait was that tip number eight wait what hold up <laughs> so it is tip number eight maybe you have it because it was a gift so think about it right you have this pair of costume jewelry that somebody got you but meanwhile your skin would react to anything that isn't pure gold or maybe you have it because some instagram influencer looked really hot really banging in that outfit and then you ordered the outfit because she said use my link and you get 20 percent off and then you ordered the outfit not bearing in mind or not considering that she's a rectangle shape your hourglass and so you end up looking like what i ordered versus what i got right like because it's not going to look the same like it looked on her so you just have it sitting in your closet and you and you haven't worn it if the reason you have it does not make sense you might want to reconsider getting rid of it tip number nine um is it comfortable if you have to like struggle to fit into a pair of shoes the likelihood that those shoes are going to be comfortable are very slim because they're going to be very tight right Think about it. There's some of these shoes, I don't know if you guys, it's ever happened to you. Some of these shoes that bruise like your Achilles heel, those are so uncomfortable. I will tell you what happened to me was up until about two years ago, or maybe three years ago, I was a size 8.5 out of the blue, I'm a size 9. So I had to start getting rid of them gradually. The weird part is my right foot is a pure 9, my left foot is like an 8.6, Is that that's even a shoe size, 8.7. So sometimes I find that I have to order like a really bigger size and then this foot, my left foot is like kind of like swimming inside the shoe. It's just a whole mess. But what I'm trying to say is like if it's tight, if I feel uncomfortable, I get rid of it. Tight shoes, I don't like itchy fabric. I can't deal. There's some of these fabrics that have like sequins and then you wear them and they're very itchy, stuff like that. I can't deal with i have to get rid of or you have some people that don't have i don't know how you guys do it people that don't have like ear holes and then yeah you have to use like the clip-on earrings those things hurt like hell especially the ones that you know the stylish ones that you clip on the cuff of your i don't know what the part of your ear is called but i call it the cuff of your ear you have to clip and so it's fancy running down those things hurt like hell they're so uncomfortable for me so for me those are no-nos. Those are things that if I had them when I thought they were fun, right now I'm not about discomfort. So if it's uncomfortable for me, that's part of the stuff I'll get rid of. Tip number 10. How old is it? You've had it since high school. Why? You've had it for 15 years. Why? Again, unless it's something very important. It was given to you by a family member. You just can't get rid of it. But we have to be careful about stuff like that because you know what happens when we start to make excuses for stuff that we've had for a long time. We gradually become hoarders. Think about it. I don't know if you guys ever watched the show. I think it was Clean House by Nisi Nash where you would, she would get into a house to clean it up and you see people like stuffed like they have a bed stuffed in the corner and it's all like newspapers or like clothes and they're hiding in the corner because everything is so piled up that's what hoarding is that's how you gradually become a hoarder when you make an excuse for everything 
you gradually gradually become a hoarder and that's the worst thing that can happen to you so if it's too old get rid of it stop making excuses for it there's no reason this is 2020 there's no reason why you should have something that you've had for 30 years 20 years there's no reason why you should have it unless it's so important there's you absolutely cannot imagine yourself getting rid of it then you can excuse it tip number 11 how does it look you don't want to be one of those people that are like people are like oh hi so they're like oh hi and they're like oh she has a nice princess wave meanwhile not a princess wave is the yellowing under your armpit <laughs> right your armpit is yellow it looks very disgusting let me tell you nobody has told you it looks disgusting or it's like worn it's threadbare you have to like shave it all the time it looks nasty if your stuff looks old like moth eaten get rid of it tip number 12 is what memories do you get from it now honestly Somebody be like, what well, memories? That's a weird question to ask yourself, but believe it or not. If you're someone who's superstitious, like the last time I wore this, I got fired. The last time I wore this, I got dumped. The last time I wore this, I was in an accident. Like it, It's like every time you wear that particular thing, you have a, a traumatic experience or a bad experience. Honestly, I'll get rid of it. I, I don't like bad energy. <laughs> like a bad aura. If I feel like something is... In Nigeria, we say your village people. If I feel like it's my people, my village people coming after me, best believe I'm getting rid of it. Tip number 13, is it trendy? Is it with the times? Like, is it something that would not make you look like you just literally walked out of a time machine? I know there's vintage. There's, some, there's vintage and there's old school. So if it's, if it's not vintage and if it does, it's not something that fits in the times, you, you know that... and. You know, maybe even if it fits in the times you wouldn't wear it, why do you have it? Get rid of it. Tip number 14, what is the upkeep and maintenance? Like, let me just tell you, I hate to iron. Hate, 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 hate to iron. I can scrub with a toothbrush my entire apartment before I iron a handkerchief. I hate to iron. So if it's something that I have to iron all the time before I have to wear, I probably wouldn't even buy it. Or if I have to like dry clean, Think about it, you have to dry clean all the time and you're on like a student budget. You have to like polish it all the time. It's just a lot of work before you actually use this item. Yeah, I'll get rid of it. And tip number 15, we are finally at number 15. Tip number 15 is, if I was given a second chance, if I saw the item today, would I buy it? Yes, everybody says this, but it is a good question to ask yourself and it's one I ask myself too. Did I buy it then because, you know, I walked past the store and he said, store closing all items must go everything 5.99 no, meanwhile it was final sales so i can't get rid of it or i can't return it but it doesn't fit me the way i thought it would fit me so if it's not something that you would buy right now given a second chance get rid of it now when you're done with that now you have two certain piles your yes pile is a certain pile your no pile is a certain pile now you're left with your maybe pile now your maybe pile is that pile that you want to try again. Remember, yes and no are certain. Maybe it's uncertain. Maybe, maybe it doesn't have a place. Yes, it's going back in your closet. No, it's going to go somewhere else. Your maybe pile, you want to go ahead and try everything on again. And then you may find out, you know, they're like, okay, you know, this thing wasn't so bad. I, I can probably wear it too. And make sure you wear it. Then it can go into your yes pile, right? Or if you find out that, you know, why did I put it in the maybe pile? This is, I'm, I'm never going to use this again. Then you could put it in your no pile. So at the end of the day, you want to have two piles yes pile and your no pile now bonus tip and i'm giving you this tip based on experience listen if you can and yes i know we're in the lockdown we're in lockdown but if you can given a different scenario you need to get rid of your no pile in nothing more than 24 hours trust me because what happens you don't get rid of that pile it sits somewhere in your house and then you go on social media or you're watching tv or watching a movie and you're like oh i have a dress like that and then you go to your closet and you find that it's not in your closet oh it's in my no pile what happens that goes right back into your closet and that's how you gradually keep putting stuff back into your closet and your closet gets cluttered again now you can donate it you can give it to family and friends or you there's so many online platforms where you can sell ebay etsy amazon well, I don't know if you can sell used stuff on Amazon, but maybe eBay, Etsy, OfferUp, uh, Mercari, Poshmark. There are so many places that you can resell your stuff. So you might want to consider 
using those platforms to make a little bit of money. There's some things that you know regardless that it's not going to make you any money. It's torn, it's worn, it's chipped, the heel is broken, that you want to toss out, you want to donate. But stuff that you know that can probably fetch you some income, then you can go ahead and put it on the resale sites. Okay? Now we're going to go into organizing. Things that you want to have on hand, you want to have a lot of closet accessories. I like to have um, layered hangers where I can hang multiple stuff for scarves, for leggings. If you want to have a nice jewelry organizer as well, you want to have like storage boxes where you can put stuff away or like drawer dividers that you can use in your drawer. Honestly, should I tell you the truth? I don't really use drawer dividers. I order stuff when it comes. I cut up the boxes and use the boxes as dividers. So you want to make sure you're hanging your delicate. So silk, satin, light stuff like cotton. Another thing that I do is I fold my heavy. So think denim. I fold all my denim. I fold my denim skirts. I don't fold my denim jackets. Those I hang. But like the jeans and denim skirts, I do fold. I also do fold thick sweaters as well. I fold those. Shoes, I try to stack. So you want to invest in like shoe organizers, like a shoe rack also. You don't want to put your shoes in a place that is going to affect or spoil the material of your shoes. You don't want to keep them in a very moist or very damp environment. You want to keep them in somewhere, somewhere that is dry. You also want to stuff your shoes to retain its shape. For those of you that have a lot of boots, I advise that you invest in a boot hanger. There are some of those boot hangers that look like Christmas trees. They almost look like a coat hanger, but they are for your boots. There's also this weird gadget, and if I find any of them, I'll put them up here. You can put inside your shoes to help you stay properly. Now we're going to go into how I organize my clothes. The first thing that I do is I organize according to season. So based on the season, my summer clothes, if it's summer, my winter clothes go at the back and vice versa. If you live in a country that does not have seasons, then you can organize according to occasions. So your church clothes, your work clothes, what you wear to the gym, you organize according to that. The second thing I do is I, I arrange according to clothes type. So clothes type, I put all my, if, it, if I'm arranging according to season, all my summer shirts or my summer pants, if I'm arranging according to occasion, all my work shirts or my church shirts or my church pants, the third thing that I do is I arrange according to hue. So all my reds, orange, pinks, my blues, greens, purples, my monochromes, so whites, black, grays, I put together. So let's assume, for instance, I'm trying to wear a red shirt to work. I already know where my work clothes are and my shirts are and I know where red shirts are. So that's it, guys. So one thing that I do is I do the one in, I would like to say one in, one out rule. But I do the one in as many as possible out rules. So if I buy something new, I try to get out as much of the same type. So if I buy a new pair of shoes, I try to take out like maybe two or three pairs of shoes. If I buy a new shirt, I try to take out like two or three shirts out. That way I don't get my closet uh, cluttered again. Because when you keep replacing without taking stuff out, your closet gets cluttered. And that's it. Bonus tip. I know all this sounds like it's a lot of work and it's so boring. It's going to take a lot out of me. Honestly, if you want to make it fun, it doesn't have to be so serious. You can do a virtual party with your girlfriends, like a Zoom or like a house party. Grab a glass of wine, play some music, have your girlfriends for moral support because they would really, your girlfriends, the ones that really love you, not frenemies, would help you make the right choice on what to keep and what to get rid of. So make it fun. Thank you guys for being here. If this is stuff that you like, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like I said, I am going to be posting a more detailed video about organizing. So you don't want to miss that. So make sure that you're here. And I would see you next Saturday. Love and light. Bye.